Zombie Strike Slingfire and I have a very long and complex relationship. I'm a little disappointed, I won't lie. That's uh, that's money that could have been put somewhere else. So when even more worker upgrade parts for this beast wound up in my P.O. box from NF Strike, I was a little uh, cautious. I've had some pretty bad luck with the Slingfire in the past and well, the fact that you're watching this segment right here and not me putting this thing on in the first place, normally how I like to do things, is a testament to how bad that luck can be because uh, this kit is really difficult. I'm not saying it's not bad or anything, but it's a lot more finicky than it probably needs to be, but at the same time, the sling fire is a very finicky blaster, so I don't exactly know where we stand on that. So for those of you not keeping up in the loop, this is the Nerf Zombie Strike Sling Fire. It was, at the time, the second lever action blaster I've kind of ever seen before. The uh, first being the rapid fire tech from Busby, but that thing was an abysmal shot and uh, didn't really have a whole lot of upgrade potential. And the Sling Fire, uh, well, it's full of gears. The bolt sled is geared, this is all geared, and gears don't do well with lots of pressure when it comes to being, well, plastic gears. So in the past, I have upgraded it with this metal lever, which you can find a video link to in the top right corner. And that made this thing slightly better. And after that, I did throw in an upgrade spring. And in fact, after that entire video, I spent a lot of time trying to fit in one of the worker retaliator upgrade kits to make this thing hit more powerful. And I couldn't really get it to work. I had a lot of problems with catching, compression, barrel length, and so forth. And I just kind of gave up. And Thankfully, sooner or later, Worker did come out with a whole new breech barrel kit for this blaster. It's a sufficiently nice kit as well. Uh, let's take it to past Walcom to kind of not only explain the kit, but also show off why this was such a hard install. We do have a short dart upgrade kit for the Sling Fire, which is kind of interesting. It comes with a spring, which seems pretty stout to me. I don't actually know how strong this spring is supposed to be. It comes with a new breech lip right here, an actual bolt right here, a new barrel and something to put that barrel inside. And I noticed that this whole thing right here is like literally some other part they just shaved down to fit in there by hand, which is kind of goofy weird to me, but hey, I guess it works. And hopefully it does work because I want considerable more performance out of this. There we go. So let's uh, move this. I don't even know that. Oh, that's a that's a hefty spring. I don't even know what one that is. So the only thing I noticed they don't actually give you with this kit is a new pin. So you will have to get the old pin out of this bolt sled. Now this will convert it to shoot short darts only, which is not exactly what I wanted, but I think I can make that work. Thankfully, NF Strike actually has instructions on their website about how to install this. So it looks like we actually have to do some shell cutting. Spoopy. Yeah, yeah, check that out. It actually fit in there. confused what locks this into place. And thus, here we are with the uh, sling fire in its glory. So what we do have here is we have the metal priming rod, the short dart breech with the upgraded spring and barrel and everything, and worker's new cosmetic barrel for the sling fire. Now this serves two actual purposes, the first of which is to be cosmetic, the second of which is to be a far easier install of the kit system after you've installed this pusher style breech. You can do without it, of course. You could totally just have a barrel sticking through here and edit the original one, but this makes it a little bit easier. And to be perfectly honest, when I first got, the, when I first saw this kit, this barrel, I thought it looked dumb. And to be perfectly honest, it's grown on me. And the main reasoning for that is because this like big, huge front blade thing right here does match up with the rear sight. And it kind of makes this interesting negative space. I wanted to hate this at first, but honestly, after a while, this has really grown on me. So if you do hate it at first, but you're kind of open-minded, you might find yourself in the same position. And the pretty quality is, well, 
worker F10 triple five standard. It's pretty good, which is interesting because this doesn't actually have their stamp anywhere on the barrel, which is somewhat interesting. What's a little more interesting is that it might be hard to tell, but mine is slightly bent. I'm not entirely sure why, because of course, installing this kit is finicky enough, but for some reason, no matter what I did, including sanding and removing pretty, even if I take this plastic piece off, it's still slightly bent. And I'm gonna kind of chalk that up to the fact that there's no like structure up here at the top pulling it upwards. It's just secured down here, and that's not gonna work really well for this blaster. It does work, but it's like three degrees off, and it really upsets me and bothers me, so that's me, I guess. And if you really wanted to do this thing justice anyway, at this point, this exact sling fire desperately needs some kind of wasteland aesthetic done to it. I mean, I've kind of already tried to do a couple of things, and this is all naturally rusted and paint chipped anyway, which is kind of freaking cool in my opinion. It, it, like, the bent barrel kind of makes sense in that regard, I suppose. It is the sling fire, so we'll give it up for that. And one of the issues that isn't really apparent is that once I've installed the worker pusher breech system, the short dart one, I had a lot of issues. In fact, I still have a lot of issues with the back of the bolt, you know, the kind that slides down inside the plunger tube and pushes the plunger rod back. It has two O-rings on it, much like any of the normal retaliator style breeches. And it's really, really like not, there's there's no room for error on that one. In fact, this blaster will seize up if I don't shoot it for like a day, even though it's well lubricated. And sometimes I wonder if I'm going to break it. Now, after the fact, I've already kind of picked it up today, which is what, 12 hours after I went to sleep last night after finishing this, and it works fine. But I let it sit for like two days and it was impossible for me to prime this lever. I had to take it apart which is a bit concerning because I don't want to break the plastic bolt sled because unless we're going to get a metal one in the future, which we very well may, that's not going to do me a whole lot of favors. Performance. Uh, this is where this whole video kind of falls apart because if you really want to use the sling fire, you really have to use the sling fire and you cannot, cannot find a Busby Sentinel on eBay and you don't want to pay the 40, 50 bucks it is at the time of this recording to pick one of those up. You really want to use the sling fire I, I, you're not really looking for performance in my opinion. This does perform rather well and it could perform better, but this is not a performance powerhouse even when using these short darts. And if you did not know, the reason why you use short darts is because they're far more efficient in terms of velocity and in terms of accuracy. They're just pretty much the worker darts anyway, are kind of the best darts you can possibly get from a standalone pre-purchase pre-production dart. If you want to make your own short darts, you certainly can, and you can make some really fine handcrafted darts. But for those of us who don't have time for that kind of stuff, these are pretty much as good as it gets. They're extremely accurate. They're just kind of expensive. I get about anywhere from like 105 to about 120 FPS out of this blaster right now, which is phenomenal with the sling fire. I wanna say like maybe it would work better with the plastic internals. I don't have those anymore, so. Hopefully it does. I'm not, I would assume they wouldn't sell this kit without knowing, like, unless Worker put out their own metal priming rod, but it's probably gonna be finicky if you're using the plastic priming rod with this thing. This metal one is, uh, it's, it's pretty okay, um, but because I have the metal one, I should be able to take a hefty spring upgrade, and to be perfectly honest right now, I haven't really found a spring for it yet. I don't know what the power of the spring that's currently in here, the one that comes with the Worker one, it's okay, it's not the strongest I've ever seen, it's pretty okay. And of course we can just open up the breach right here, push that up like that, close that, and you've got this weird magazine, like, I don't know how I feel about this, this kind of ruins the entire lever action feel for me. It's not terrible, but it does kind of ruin it for me. But it does work and it is a pusher style breach, so when you pull the lever forward like that, you notice the magazine just indexed right there. It's actually pushing the dart forward into the barrel. So there is about that much dead space between the actual plunger rod pushing air forward and the dart actually being propelled out of the barrel. So it's far less efficient, but it's way easier to deal with than any kind of breach. Unfortunately, this means it will only work with any kind of short dart, but the magazine has to be far forward. Katana magazines, for instance, will not work with this system 
because the bolt does not travel far enough back because the bolt does not travel far enough back. This is one of those setups where I can say it's kind of a difficult recommendation because it is. If you want a lever action blaster that performs way better than this thing could ever dream of, that is of course just using the Sentinel. If you cannot get a Sentinel, then this is probably your next best option if you want to have that lever action system. But the entire amount of money that's kind of put into this so far, it's really hard to justify it. it it's, a, it's a metal breech, it's a barrel, it's a metal gear set, and you're really only gonna get like anywhere. I would bet you could push this thing to like 140 FPS maybe. I'm not the best Springer guy in the world, that's for sure, but this is a lot of work for, not a whole lot of payoff. It's still extremely finicky. I could be doing something entirely wrong, but it is extremely, extremely finicky. But if you want a good performing Nerf Zombie Strike Sling Fire, this is kind of the way to go. You don't need this barrel, but I gotta say, I kind of like it. Although it is goofy that it has two barrels up at the front and only the bottom barrel actually has any kind of dart coming out of it. But let me know what you think about the worker upgrade parts for the sling fire down in the comment section below. I'm gonna need your opinions on this one. Do you think it is worth paying the money to get a sling fire up to this point? I think it's a little bit of a hard sell. I really like this right now. I hope to get more performance out of it in the future, but at the same time, I, that's a lot of money and effort. Thank you very much for watching this video. I am, of course, Walcom S7. I do hope to see you in an entirely different one. You gotta